सो दिस इज डॉक्टर कविता सिंह एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग इन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनोटिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ टॉपिक कॉल्ड एस रोल ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग एंड जी आई एस इन डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड दिस कोर्स वी हैव लर्न मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट रिमोट सेंसिंग वी हैव लर्न मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट GIS part how we can just gather the information from remote sensing how we can just use that data in the GIS and how we can display the data and how it is useful to the users so this all we have learned in the previous lectures so today we'll be uh, just learning about how this remote sensing in GIS technology it's helpful in the disaster management so disaster is a very sudden event it happens anywhere anytime without giving any intimation so that's the problem so how can we just uh, use this role of uh, we can use this remote sensing and we can use the gis to at least reduce the losses to not to avoid at least we can reduce the losses based on the mapping hazard mapping we can do based on the just finding out the areas which are vulnerable areas the areas which are uh, not able to uh, receive that kind of uh, Sudden disasters, so that all informations if we give prior knowledge that will help us. The remote sensing will help us in just uh, getting the data from the satellites, and it will help us to give the information to the uh, departments to just get the result out of it. So let us start this lecture today. So in this lecture, we'll be uh, learning about role of remote sensing. and gis in disaster management uh, key applications of real time monitoring in gis and advantages of using remote sensing in gis in disaster management uh, role of geospatial technology in case study of tsunami or conflict so we have just taken one case study to let us understand that how the uh, this uh, remote sensing and how gis is helpful in this sudden events So let us start with the first topic: uh, role of remote sensing in GIS and disaster management. So remote sensing in GIS, as we know, remote sensing gives us the the data which we receive from the satellites, which we receive from the photogrammetry, the aerial photos. These all photos we receive from the either from the satellites, either from the uh, photogrammetry or aerial photos through aeroplanes or through parachutes. So these photos, whatever we receive, that particular data, it is just used for the uh, like if the disaster is going to occur before picture we will take after picture we will take and just we try to compare the areas which area which is try to demarcate the areas suppose this area is that this is the area which is given for so uh, if there is somewhat river over here suppose there is a river here so this river uh, in a flood situation flood situation it may overflow okay so overflow so if we give this uh, map uh, before itself with the help of the uh, this uh, remote sensing technology if we give this information if this give uh, if we just find out if we demarcate the areas wherever the areas we see some water bodies are present and nearby areas what are the features which are going to uh, affect this all information we can get through the remote sensing and gis so gis will just help us to implement this data in Will help us to uh, add all this information and give a proper output out out of it. But what the remote sensing does is remote sensing is a very uh, important part here. It just collects the data before and after. So this is suppose for example this is the before. Now after situation before disaster we can say so this situation is before disaster and this situation is after disaster. Okay after disaster. so this situation is after disaster if you want to uh, know so the same map we can just see like this and we can just see that this river is overflow so this river may uh, come from here to it may widen from so before situation is like this now after situation is like this so this is how the difference we can just try to uh, get a information out of it and just try to uh, get a result out of it this areas are totally vulnerable areas vulnerable areas we can say uh, which can be shifted in the future and we can avoid this areas for the construction or uh, any kind of uh, human use or land use practices so this is how uh, remote sensing in gis play a 
critical role in disaster management because nowadays the disaster is very much sudden event it can happen any time any moment at any place so it can be a natural and it can be a man made that we know right so man made means uh, that is also a sudden event we are unable to just get to know that suddenly what is going to happen so same thing if you are prepared so if you have the information in prior if you have the information these are the areas which are not on the these are the areas which are on the risk zones Uh, on the risk zones, we can just try to avoid this area with the help of the disaster mapping. So it gives us providing the timely, accurate, detailed spatial informations that supports the entire disaster management cycle, including preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation. So this is the uh, cycle which uh, a disaster management will follow, where you have a, a preparedness phase, second phase is response phase, third phase is the recovery phase, and the fourth phase is the mitigation phase. So this, these are the four phases our disaster management cycles uh, will be followed. So let us understand here disaster preparedness. What is a preparedness? How uh, remote sensing and GIS plays an important role in the disaster preparedness. So if you talk about preparedness when a disaster is going to happen in such a place, then what we are going to do is hazard mapping. Uh, remote sensing can detect and monitor potential hazards so it can detect and monitor the potential hazards such as fault lines flood zones and volcanic activity mm -hmm. so if there is a uh, activity like fault lines this activity for the uh, we can say it is for the earthquake is going to occur suppose a uh, earthquake is going to occur in such a area so if with the help of the remote sensing data if you are able to find out the fault line where it is going to occur so that uh, will be helpful to reduce the losses of such areas so before uh, data that's what i was saying you before data and the after data so before information if we get to know we are able to reduce the losses and flood zones and the volcanic activity so flood zones uh, which are the flood zones which are going to be affected so these areas like we can say these are under the flood zone area which is going to be affected and the volcanic activity volcanic activity means the volcanic eruptions may occur and what are the areas nearby areas are going to um, come under this volcanic activity are going to be spoiled this all information we can just give through the before itself like uh, if you see this map this is the classification of hazard mapping so this is one area which is taken as study area okay this is the study area where you can see uh, there are different different classifications it is done here we have uh, very low hazard area and low hazard area moderately low hazard area moderate hazard area high hazard and very high hazard so these are all the classifications of hazard mapping this is done with the help of the remote sensing and remote sensing and and gis okay so how it is helpful like remote sensing is this data this data is brought from remote sensing data is brought from remote sensing whereas this map uh, what you can see here is map is prepared prepared using gis okay this map is prepared using the gis so how it is classified if you see very low hazard regions so which areas are very low hazard regions this areas we can see very low hazard regions then you can see uh, the green color one is very low hazard region then the low hazard region is what this light color region you can see it's a low hazard region moderately you can see the yellow color is the moderately hazard region now you can see the moderate hazard region so this orange one is moderate hazard region now high and very high so high and very high why we can say here is this areas you can see this areas are going to be affected with the definitely going to be affected with the disaster whenever a disaster is going to occur these areas can be affected so this is how we can just prepare the hazard mapping based on the classification based on the identification of the aerial photos based on the identification of the satellite data we can just try to classify the regions and we can just get to know the information before itself when this hazard is going to occur in such regions so this is how our uh, remote sensing is helpful in the disaster management now if you see there is a steps involved in the hazard uh, mapping so if you want to just go with the mapping of the hazard mapping what we have to do gis page database and spatial analysis we can do 
So database means GIS contains lot of database along with that. Uh, it has a, a lot of database about the satellite data. We can say data is like uh, satellite information, satellite data about the area. We can say about the area study area. Okay, satellite data about the study area we have. So these areas will be helpful in just uh, finding out the database and it will give us the information about the uh, particular area and all the data is saved in such a database. And then the further spatial analysis is done by this using these maps. Okay, so these are the different layers which we can uh, use this uh, like uh, rain, land use or NDVI or uh, something like slope, SPI, geology. So these are all uh, uh, maps which we can use it. And then we can go with the normalization and later uh, with the uh, this further process you can go through and ASP you can conduct, order weight you can go. And finally the subjective maps are prepared and comparing with the real flooding data. So this is how there are different steps which can be involved in uh, just getting the uh, information and finally the decision we can take based on this uh, kind of mapping of results. Now, GS integrates this data to create hazard maps, which are essential for planning and zoning. So, it will integrate the data, it will create the hazard map, which are essential for the planning and the zoning purpose. Now, risk assessment. Risk ass assessment can be done using the GS. Now, GS combines spatial data with demographic infrastructure. It will help us to combine the spatial data. What is spatial data? If you remember what is spatial data? Spatial data is a data which is physically like which we see around you. So there are two types of data we have. So when we call it as spatial data. So spatial data means all the features in the form of point, uh, in the form of point, line, Polygon. So these are all spatial data. So point, line, or polygon. So what are the point, line, and polygon here? So point is all the locations we can say all the locations. Uh, second thing, line is like all the linear features. Linear features like uh, we can talk about roads, roads, canals, or rivers. So all the linear features we can just uh, uh, talk about. These are all spatial data. Polygon, which type of data is called as polygon data? Like forest boundaries. Forest boundaries. We have uh, village boundaries. Village boundaries. We have uh, mandal boundaries. So these all types of data uh, we can just tell us uh, it is in the form of the spatial data okay so this all data are used uh, with along with the demographic infrastructure environmental data to assess the vulnerability and risk levels helping authorities to prepare better so this uh, risk, uh, risk assessment how it can done it can be done is by using the spatial data and demographic data spatial and non uh, spatial data is given to the authorities to just uh, map this data hazard information they will get to know that which areas are or are vulnerable and which areas are on the risk levels helping to authorities to prepare them better so this is how preparedness we can use this remote sensing in gis in the preparedness phase of the any disaster so a fundamental principle of risk assessment is that risk due to natural catastrophes such as earthquakes hurricanes and flood is location dependent and that it can be assessed within the uh, uh, acceptable range of uncertainty if reliable historical location specific data is available. Now, risk assessment of natural catastrophe, uh, catas catastrophes has two components, hazards and the vulnerability. Now, next thing is a response. So, how do we uh, help, how this uh, uh, remote sensing in GS helps in the disaster response? So, it has a uh, very good technology that real-time monitoring. It can do the real-time monitoring. So during a disaster, remote sensing provides a real-time data. So real-time data means what the data like suppose a uh, rain, uh, heavy rain has occurred in uh, such a reason continuously it is raining. So satellites will give you the clear picture of such areas how much area is flooded and how much rainfall is going to occur in such a region. All the predictions the IMD department can give you through the satellites. It will give us the every hour information, every second information, what is going to happen, what is the condition of the weather, what uh, whether the cloud coverage is there, whether the next hour it is going to rain and whether it is going to rain heavily or not. That all predictions are given by the IMD department. 
based on this remote sensing process. And GIS will help us to just display this data and it will help us to give this information in the form of the uh, the maps. So it will give us the information in the form of the maps and it will help us to tell us the information about the areas which are vulnerable, which are going to occur, uh, which are going to be flooded in such cases. So through satellites, images, aerial photography and drones, uh, the data is collected by to get the real time information for example a uh, sudden uh, flood has occurred in such a region then uh, immediate information if we want either the satellite uh, will give but if satellite will take time then we are going to use the drones we are going to use the drones to just uh, collect the information immediately in such region so drone is also a technology remote sensing technology because without having the physical context in the so it is called, it is a kind of the photogrammetry, we can say it is a kind of photogrammetry, uh, which will just click the photos of such areas, which will just capture the video of that area, the area which is going to be affected or which is already affected or above based on the disasters. So this helps in the monitoring and extent and the severity of the role of the disaster, such as the spread of wildfires, the extent of flooding or damage from the Earthquake. So, these all information it will help us to give. Now, benefits of the real time monitoring. So, there are many benefits of the real time monitoring is what getting the instant alerts to the latest uh, uh, future or even something issues is going to happen. That all events it will help us to give the alerts or predictions before itself. Now, staying updated in the dynamic environment. So, as the environment is dynamic, it's not a stable environment. Anytime anything can happen, so it is unpredictable, the nature is unpredictable, any disaster can occur at any moment. So this real-time monitoring will help us to give us the updated information, the present condition, the uh, ongoing condition and the future conditions what are going to happen that will help us to tell. So detecting uh, emerging trends and the patterns also it will help us to give us the information uh, compiling the, the regulatory requirements that all information will be given by this real time monitoring now uh, currently isri offers the real time gs capabilities via arcgis so if you remember in the previous lectures many times we have discussed about gis arcgis software so this is the software which is just given by the isri which is offered by the isri uh, and it's a RGS Geo event extension for server which can be deployed on the premises or, or in the cloud. So ready uh, to deploy images of RGS for server including the RGS Geo event extension for server are available via RGS server cloud builder on amazing web services and the Microsoft Azure. So this is how easily is the um, research center this is the organization which has developed this software which will help us to give the real-time information now geo event extension is currently used by hundreds of organizations geo events are used by the hundreds of uh, organizations uh, which across the various industries including the agriculture government uh, natural resources transportation and the utilities so the number of connected devices is rapidly increasing and those devices are producing the exponentially more data and can create the demand of higher data in just in recent final analytics now key applications of real-time monitoring in gs now what are the different key applications if you talk about uh, key applications of real-time monitoring so we have disaster management and emergency response so under this we have uh, First thing is disaster management and an emergency uh, response. So in natural disaster, real-time monitoring of weather patterns. So it will give us the real-time monitoring of the weather patterns, how is the weather conditions uh, and about the earthquake regions, it will give us about the floods uh, monitoring or wildfires helps in the tracking and predicting the spread of these events. Uh, before itself, before the disaster is going to occur. So, GIS can visualize the affected areas and guide the excavation, uh, evacuation uh, of efforts or resource allocations. So, it will visualize the affected areas, whatever areas are going to be affected. Before itself, the GIS will visualize by preparing the hazard zone maps, hazard mapping we can do, and it will guide to evacuate that area. So evacuation efforts uh, will occur and the resource allocations will be given to the uh, residents over there. 
Now, traffic management and transportation. So, this is also very important uh, and very helpful. Uh, this thing topic about this traffic management and transportation. So, remote sensing in GIS will help us in the management of the traffic. Uh, as the real time monitoring is very much helpful in the uh, real time monitoring because now also if you just check the Google Maps, it will show you that uh, if suddenly a disaster has occurred, like suddenly a heavy rain has occurred. Uh, what happens? There is a lot of traffic congestions in uh, many of the ways, many of the uh, roads or traffic junctions. So it will just show us the condition. G GIS will show us the uh, which area is clear and which area is having the traffic condition. So that data is provided by the remote sensing. Agent. So remote sensing will remote sensing will provide the data remote sensing will provide the data and uh, the gis will gis will display so gis will display the data remote sensing will provide the data so wherever the traffic flow is there traffic flow is there it will tell us the area so wherever the condition is there condition routes are there so that area also will be mapped in the gis by using the remote sensing data so an incident in the real time helping in the traffic management even it helps us in the traffic management which area the areas which are affected with the traffics uh, how can we manage that such areas that will be given by this traffic management route of op route optimization for the commuters and Emergency vehicles are also provided by this regions. Now, public transportation. So, what is public transportation here? So, public transportation uh, will help us like real time tracking of buses. So, if you have to travel from one place to other place, or if you want to go through uh, buses or routes or, or trains, so it will just give us the tracking that where exactly uh, by using the GPS locations in the GPS devices in the um, buses or trains it will tell us that your location where you are arrived and which place you have arrived and how, how much distance is from this area to the other location that all information is, is given by the G, uh, remote sensing so remote sensing is giving you remote sensing in gps is giving you the exact location of tracking we can just track our buses we can track our train so these things are very important nowadays which will help us to reduce the disasters if any other uh, uh, track is there which is blocked if there is a congestion so that all information will be given by the remote sensing satellite data itself and schedules improving the services providing the real-time updates and to the passengers that all it is provided by the real-time monitoring by GIS so very important in the traffic monitoring important in the public transportation too now third thing what we uh, the second thing here is environmental monitoring so how this real time uh, mapping is real time monitoring of uh, remote sensing and gis is useful in the air and water quality uh, it's like uh, sensors placed in the various locations and can feed the real time data into GIS platforms. So sensors which are placed in the various locations uh, can feed the real-time data like into the GIS platform which will allow uh, for the continuous monitoring of the environmental parameters like air pollution, water quality, noise levels. So it will just tell us about the uh, the continuous monitoring it will do and it will tell us about the parameters means how much pollution is present in the atmosphere, what is the water quality in such region and that noise levels in such region through. Uh, we can just map, suppose this map is prepared, in this map it will tell us that uh, which area like with the help of the spatial distribution map which area is having more population or uh, pollution uh, so the pollution located areas it will show so pollution located areas with environmental par parameter with environmental parameter it will show you about the uh, which level of pollution is more um, present in that so this is how uh, it is tell us about the pollution uh, environmental pollution the water quality levels the noise levels uh, it will help us in the environmental monitoring now wildlife tracking means how does it helps in the wildlife tracking again so real-time monitoring of the animals uh, movement via gps collars or uh, other tracking devices helps in the conservation efforts studying migration patterns and preventing the human wild uh, conflicts so it will just track the uh, animals movements with the help of the remote sensing with the help of the satellite data 
satellite data it will tell us the uh, about the different animals present in the animals present in the forest how, how much how many animals are present the how where is the movements from which place to the other place it is they are moving that all can be given by this uh, satellite data uh, the data which is used by this uh, uh, active remote sensors it will provide us the real time data with the different camera so it give us the information about the movements of the animals from here to there so other tracking devices helps us in the conservation efforts studying migration patterns preventing human wildlife conflicts that all will help us in this now urban planning and infrastructure management so how does it helps in the urban planning and infrastructure management like smart cities a gis is used in smart city initiatives to monitor uh, utilities like electricity water uh, waste management systems in real time ensuring efficient resource management quick response to issue so in the smart cities like gis is used in the smart city uh, which will have the initiatives to monitor the utilities like electricity uh, water waste management systems in the real time ensuring efficient resource management and quick response to the issues so in smart cities we can just use uh, the monitoring of the electricity we can just monitor the water and the waste management practices from which area to which area it is transported that will help us in the smart cities in the infrastructure development now infrastructure monitoring real time monitoring of infrastructure such as bridges roads pipelines bridges roads and pipelines this will help us in detecting the structural issues early preventing failures and optimizing the maintenance schedule now damage assessment GIS helps in the quickly assessing the damage by uh, comparing the pre and post disaster images so it will help us to assess the uh, damages before and after pre means pre means before post means after so pre uh, post and before and after uh, images it will give you and it will show you that how much damage is taken place in such region and it identifies the affected areas infrastructures populations riding relief efforts efficiently so it will identify the affected areas infrastructures populations guiding the relief and efforts efficiently uh, resource allocations gis supports the coordination of rescue operations by mapping the availability and location of resources ensuring that aid reaches the most affected areas so resource allocations means if you want to just allocate the resources in such a disaster conditions so how the gis supports us means it will coordinate and it will uh, guide us to where the where is the place where you have to go for the rescue operation by mapping the availability and locations of the resources and reaches to the Uh, aid reaches to the most affected area. So first of all, they will just map that which region has to be reach, which kind of resource from uh, main source to the other source, which kind of resource has to be reached from the um, to the most affected areas. That will be mapped in a GIS map. Now disaster recovery. How is the disaster recovery happening? Uh, how the remote sensing in GIS is helpful in this disaster recovery? Reconstruction planning. so post disaster uh, gis assist in planning the reconstruction of affected areas so it will just plan the uh, gis will help us to plan the reconstruction of the affected, affected area for example this is a affected area in this we have this regions are totally affected so this regions are the affected regions so affected regions so how this regions to be uh, just uh, again reconstructed that will tell us uh, that will be having with the uh, help of this uh, gis process it will give us the after information and analyze the extent of the damage in identifying the safer locations for the rebuilding now monitoring recovery process so remote sensing enables the continuous monitoring of the recovery process so here uh, when you uh, do the continuous uh, uh, monitoring of recovery like every time we are continuously mapping ensuring the rebuilding efforts and track the uh, that communities and returning to the normalcy so we have to just track this uh, enables and continues the monitoring of the recovery process ensuring that we just rebuild this efforts and we try to track and communities uh, are returning to the normalcy and just we are going to recover to such places so this is how the post disaster phase uh, is a period after the disaster has occurred 
So when the government is involved in the risky activities and the community is working to the rebuild and return the normal region. So uh, this post-disaster phase will help us to just relocate and will help us to reoccur. The government involvement and the rescue activities are taking place with the communities uh, working to rebuild the return to the normal. And the goal of the post-disaster management is to reduce the negative impact of the disasters on the people, uh, property and the environment and uh, to help the communities function and normally again it is quickly as possible. Disaster mitigation. So how this mitigations and mitigation, how the GIS is helpful now again. So identifying the vulnerabilities. So which areas are vulnerable? So GIS will identify the areas which are on the high risk. So areas are identified by the GIS which are on the high risk of the future disaster by analyzing the historical data, land use patterns, environmental conditions. Uh, this all it is provided by the uh, GIS, it will provide us the uh, mapping, it will show you the hazard map, hazard mapping and with the help of the hazard mapping, uh, which are the high risk zones, it will tell you and uh, of futures and the disasters by the analyzing uh, historical data, land use patterns, environmental conditions. So this information helps in mitigating potential impacts to the better land use planning and the building codes. Now early warning system. So how this remote sensing helps us to give a early warning system. So remote sensing data feeds into the early warning systems, providing the critical information on approaching disasters like cyclones, hurricanes and tsunamis. So it will provide us the information about the approaching the disasters like cyclones, hurricanes and the tsunamis. So it will give you the early warning before itself, how it is going to occur, which place it is going to occur. And it will give you the alarms. It will give you the information before it sends to just evacuate that place and shift to the safer place by this early morning system. So GIS will help us to just uh, map the such areas that which places have to be evacuated and uh, which places to be shifted from that place to the other place. And early warning system more since it feeds into the uh, information is feeded into the data which will help us to give the uh, uh, people the information in the critical situations and GS then helps in the disseminating the warnings to the vulnerable populations. Now advantages of using remote sensing and GS in disaster management. So using the remote sensing and GS in disaster management, how it is having a good advantage, how we can say. Uh, large area coverage. First of all, the important thing here is remote sensing is having a, such a technology, it is having a, such a capability that it is having uh, it can just capture the large areas the, the human the huge area is captured like entire world can be captured at a one time so this is how it is having to capture the huge areas it is having a capability of uh, providing the data over the large areas and in, in the inaccessible areas which areas are not able to access the remote areas which we are unable to go to such places so that area information also it will give us the remote sensing will give us the areas information if any disaster has occurred in such a place that information is also given by the remote sensing in GIS making it ideal for tracking wide scale disasters like floods and wildfires so it will give us the wildfire information uh, wide scale disasters like floods and wildfires, accuracy and timeliness. So, accuracy and timeliness, uh, it will give us the accuracy remote sensing offers the high resolution up to date imagery, uh, which is crucial for timely and precise decision making. So, it will give the accurate information with the high resolution data. So, what is high resolution here? Resolution means it will give a high spatial resolution here. Spatial resolution so what is spatial resolution here so with the uh, very clarity of the image the data like with the half cent half meter data uh, like uh, that data half meter object can be visible in our image so that type of clarity we can see like nowadays we can see the google Earth clarity so it's very clear the house top side view upper view and the any small small things which is of the half meter on the ground it is visible on the image so it is having a very high resolution data so that kind of high resolution data if uh, satellite provides so the is the thing is it is very easy to update the imagery and will be crucially time, timely and precise decision making can be given by this integration of analysis 
and analysis gs integrates multiple data sources enabling uh, comprehensive analysis visualization that improves the situational awareness and decision making so it will help us to visualize the data comprehensive analysis it will do and it will improve the situational awareness and the decision making process uh, very fast now examples of use so uh, for example we have a tsunami response so after uh, the 2004 indian ocean tsunami remote sensing so tsunami was a very uh, big disaster in the history so it was a big disaster in the history uh we can say so how it was managed in the history right so in the indian ocean it, it occurred so how it was managed by the disaster um uh, was managed by the remote sensing ngs so uh in the 2004 indian ocean tsunami remote sensing ngs were used extensively to access the damage map affected areas and the uh coordinate relief efforts so in this uh, they have just immediate response was to map such areas where gis were used to map the extensively excess damage how much damage it is happening so gis was used so was used uh, to manage manage or assess or assess the damaged area okay damaged area area okay and affected areas and have a coordinate relief efforts in such region now hurricane monitoring so this is also one example how the gis is helpful so satellite and gis systems are routinely used to track hurricanes so a hurricane saw something like if any heavy rains are going to occur before itself uh, the imd department the department is going to tell you about the uh information that uh, sudden hurricane is going to occur or any cyclone is going to occur that all information is given by the satellites so so this is given by the imd department we can say so imd department will be very much helpful in giving this information to through the satellites and forecast their paths plans and it will help us in the evacuations earthquake impact assessment in the aftermath and of the earthquakes like the uh, gis helps in identifying the most severely affected areas guiding the emergency response teams so in this uh, aftermath means after the earthquakes uh, before and after so this situation so also we can say before and after so before and after satellite images will be helpful the satellite data the satellite data or we can say satellite uh, Uh, data will be helpful in before and after before and after mark we can say so what is the condition in such region when a wherever the earthquake has occurred earthquake has occurred it will tell us about the remote sensing will give you the pictures of before and after and it will help us to uh, just locate such areas and uh, which area to be evacuated and which area is again safer it will help us to just find out the fault lines which is the exact uh, focus point where the earthquake has occurred and later in the future uh, to reduce the losses that area to be developed or evacuated or not to be used for the residential areas so that is a, a very helpful thing now the role of geospatial technology in case study of tsunami 2004 so a geospatial technology what is a geospatial technology here so geospatial technology is the technology combinedly if we say if we say remote sensing photogrammetry photogrammetry uh, gis gps so this all combined we call it as geospatial technology okay so geospatial technology is uh, very helpful in the any kind of disaster which is going to occur so here uh, the case study has been taken like in the 2004 there was a tsunami a very huge tsunami which was occurred in the indian ocean which has spoiled lot of property and lot, lot of life of the people now if you want to uh, how we the remote sensing in gis was used in this so in the damage assessment remote sensing satellite from the various sensors like landsat icnos spot so icnos is the satellite which gives us a very high resolution very high resolution data will give us the very high resolution data and spot uh, provided immediate visual data of the extent of the damage it will provide us the immediate extent information and how much area spoiled that information was given so this is what the tsunami is a lot of area was affected this total region was affected uh, with this so this was given by the like satellite data 
satellite image uh, with a high resolution satellite image you can just get this with a high resolution satellite satellite image or with spatial spatial resolution with the high spatial resolution and this areas are mapped and uh, this areas are going to be affected that areas are before itself it is given by the uh, satellite data and this this data was like it is going to be spoiled so this information was given so before condition was this after condition means total area was converted into it was totally flooded into water so these images help to identify areas that were most affected including the flood regions and destroyed the infrastructure and displaced population so how much area was destroyed and how much area was flooded and the regions which were destroyed in infrastructure and uh, the population displacements are also given by these regions. So the before and after images were particularly useful for understanding the scale of uh, destruction. It will tell us about the scale of destruction. Now mapping of the induction areas. So uh, the second thing is mapping of the induction areas means uh, how the remote sensing helps in that. So remote sensing like radar, optical satellite images helped map. They helped in the map the extent of the tsunami indu uh, inundation so uh, in this uh, data helped to delineate the flooded areas and identify the path of the tsunami waves so it will just it has helped to delineate the flooded area so which area was totally flooded it was identified and identify the path what was the path of the tsunami waves so this path was identified by the remote sensing satellite data so satellite data uh, helped us in finding out uh, the the real path of the tsunami and how much area was flooded in such region so now gis part how the gis was help us uh, these uh, inundation maps inundation maps were crucial in understanding the impacts so how much was the impact in such region on the various uh, coastal zones and were used to model the future of tsunami events and plan for the disaster risk reduction so in the future it will help us to uh, reduce the losses in the uh, when the disaster risk reduction can be done based on these areas based on the impact how much was the impact uh, of such region and how much area was affected how much area was flooded that all flooded information was given by this gis data so gis gives us to display the proper information and just take us the decision further for the uh, evacuating or how much area was affected that all information was given by the gis monitoring and early warning so in this uh, event, uh, remote sensing, how it helps us, although not widely used before 2004 even, post-tsunami analysis emphasize the importance of remote sensing in monitoring ocean conditions. So before 2004, there was not such a huge technology, but nowadays the remote sensing technology has increased in such a manner that it can give you the early warning before itself and not of losses can be reduced. So uh, this was widely used before the 2004 event. So post tsunami analysis was done and it was emphasized to the importance of remote sensing in the monitoring of the ocean conditions. So satellite with radar altimeters uh, could potentially detect uh, tsunami uh, waves in the deep ocean. Now GS post even GS played a crucial role in developing the early warning systems by mapping out uh, vulnerable areas, stimulating the potential futures and tsunami scenarios. So this data was improved to preparedness of the coastal communities. So it has helped us to just uh, map this potential future and the tsunami scenarios, mapping out the vulnerable areas and stimulating the potential futures in the tsunami scenarios. So this data was used to improve the preparedness of the coastal communities. It helps in uh, uh, improve the preparedness of that areas and later that life was very normal condition based on the preparedness. Uh, the any time when tsunami is going to occur, the losses has become loss. Humanitarian aid co coordination such like as was used to map the distribution of aid. So uh, mapping is very important in this. So while uh, distribution of the aids to which areas to be distributed, what type of resources to be distributed to the which region. So it was just helped by the this uh, GIS part and it has given the resources and shelters to the other people in the region. Now it helped in humanitarian agencies like coordinate their efforts uh, more effectively by the visualizing the locations of the affected populations, uh, infrastructure damage and the status of the transportation networks also it was just given by this uh, GIS. 
Now, post disaster reconstruction, remote sensing it continued the satellite monitoring uh, helped in the tracking the recovery process and the monitoring the rebuilding of the infrastructure, assessing the environmental changes due to the tsunami and such as the coastal erosion or changes in the land cover. So that all the assessment was done after the post disaster and the reconstruction was done based on this remote sensing part. So for, uh, reconstruction if you want to do that continuous monitoring has been done with the help of the uh, that uh, area images are captured and uh, before how it was in the later how much area was to be rebuilt how much area was the affected area impact how much was the impact and the environmental changes due to the tsunami and the coastal erosion how much erosion has happened and what is the land cover changes near by the coastal that was all given by that remote sensing so conclusion is remote sensing and gs are indispensable tools in disaster management. So they are indispensable tools in disaster management, providing essential data. It will provide essential data for preparedness, response, recovery, mitigation. So it gives us the essential data. So it provides us the essential data for the preparedness. It will us, uh, give us the essential data for the response, how much is the response, recovery, what are the regions which are going to be recovered and the mitigation of such region it will be given by the, provided by the remote sensing engineers. So their integration leads to more effective disaster management strategies, ultimately saving lives and reducing the economic losses. So basically it helps them to reduce the economic losses uh, and uh, reduce the saving the life of the people. Uh, this uh, remote sensing and GIS plays a very important role in the disaster management. Uh, in, like it plays a role in almost all the fields, but it is very helpful in the disaster management which will, which will reduce the lives, losses and will reduce the losses in the economy. So this is how this disaster management uh, is managed by this remote sensing in GIS. So I hope you understood about this, uh, the importance of uh, remote sensing in GIS in the disaster management fields, how important it is. If nowadays in all the defense people, all the government is using this uh, remote sensing in GIS uh, techniques to just find out the areas affected, how much impact is going to happen before condition and after what condition after the disaster. So that's the reason the losses has been reduced. Otherwise, if you are unknown of the current situation, if you are unknown of the conditions around us and unknown of the area, which type of area it is, vulnerable area or it is safer area or it is under the risk zone, the conditions are very much difficult to manage. So remote sensing in GS will give us the proper condition to manage such areas in the disaster management. So these are the few of the references which you can just go through to find out the more contents about this uh, disaster management or remote sensing in GIS technology. So you can just go through this Amanji Reddy book where remote sensing in GIS make these publications, go through these links to find out the more content about this remote sensing in GIS. So that's all for today. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.